the first job as a software engineer, web developer or something similar can be quite complicated and stressful, especially if it's your first job. You are probably loaded with a thousand questions, unsure of how to act and what to think about your future colleagues and managers. These first experiences are really important because it's going to set up who you are and your work ethics. And this will carry through to the rest of the year and the rest of your life. In this video, I'm going to give you six tips to not only survive your first job, but also allow you to stand out and have a good reputation. Before jumping to the video, I just want to remind you that if they have chosen you among all the candidates, it's for something. It's because you have something they like, something that the company is looking for. Keep this in mind. The onboarding process lasts approximately three to six months. Companies will take into account aspects such as adaptability, personality, development and use of soft skills. Right, now I will tell you six job skills they don't teach you in college that you can apply to your first job as a software engineer. Stay until the end because I'm going to share one personal experience I had that I learned a lot from. Show desire and willingness to learn and to listen. It might sound obvious, but I've seen many people start their careers on the wrong foot or they believe they know everything and are not open to listening, or some don't show much motivation and energy for working hard. So what can we do to have the best attitude? First, be positive and optimistic. Show initiative. Be open to criticism. Have your own mind. It doesn't mean to be stubborn when working with others, but express what you think. If there is some code that you think it can't be done better, suggest it. If then your colleagues think that it's not a good idea what you are suggesting, at least now you know why the code was written in that way. This lines up quite well with my next point. Ask questions. If you make mistakes, that's fine. Just learn from them and be open about what you still don't understand. Asking for guidance when you are not sure about something is better than making bad decisions, losing time and getting frustrated. You are only at the beginning level. Nobody expects perfection from you, so there is no need for you to pretend you can do something you can't. Having said that, I think it's also as important to try and find the answers for yourself. It's important to show initiative, as we said earlier, and don't be too afraid to fail. Your colleagues and your managers will think higher of you if you give it a go first and then ask the questions. It will also be a lot easier for you to understand the concept if you spend some time googling things and solving some of your doubts before asking your colleagues further. Imagine you are in a situation where you are asking how the deployment process works and your colleague explained to you all the steps you need to take to deploy an app. She talks about CI and CD, continuous integration, continuous deployment, Azure, GitHub Actions, development environment, and you have no idea what any of these words mean. You might feel uncomfortable having to ask more questions about it because it's not that you are not quite understanding the process of deploying an app, it's that you never heard of these tools or these concepts. So you might simply accept the answer and go back to work in an even more confused state and loaded with more questions than you had before. Instead, you check first the documentation of the app you are working on and Google how the deployment process works. What different technologies do people use? You'll probably come across most of all of these terms. Then, when your colleague runs you through all the process, at least now you'll know what CI and CD stands for, for example. Take notes about everything, even if they don't make much sense at first. If you are in a situation where you are not understanding anything that is coming out of the other person's mouth, write notes. Write all the words you can as fast as possible. Then, later on, you can Google them and start digging into them. You'd be really surprised at how some things might make no sense at first, but these words will be the key for you to fully understand everything. In my first year, I was constantly in this situation. I was all the time confused about how to do the task I was assigned and even completely lost on what I actually had to do. My manager will explain to me what I needed to do with no many instructions to be fair, but my mind will go blank. And the only thing I could think of is that I actually have no idea what he's talking about. So I just focus on taking notes, saying no problem to him, and then just try to make sense on my own about it. Once I started working on the task, my notes were my lifesaver. 
I might be sounding like I'm just advising you to do only research on your own whether before or after rather than asking multiple questions and so on about it. And of course it's important to ask for help and don't be afraid about that. As I was saying, I was in pretty stressful situations at times and I probably should have asked more questions. But I had this wrong idea of never asking questions and always saying yes. Not good. But it's also true that it's hard to ask questions when you don't understand anything. And at the same time, you are starting a new job in tech and this can get overwhelming quickly and you'll be surrounded by really smart people. And let's be honest, it's uncomfortable to constantly be requesting a five minutes chat that'll end up being a half an hour one with your team. And some people don't really enjoy getting bothered about some questions that you might find the answers to in Google. Also, by not coming out with the answers on your own, you are not developing the problem-solving part of your brain. So help yourself out by just trying to resolve some questions on your own and then checking in with your team about it. They'll be surprised about how much you know even when you are just starting. To sum up what I just said, show initiative by doing your research first. Ask questions and don't be afraid of sounding stupid. Express your ideas and opinions and be humble with what you don't understand. Also, take notes of all your learning and show the right attitude by keep learning and repeating this process over and over. This is not something that you only need to apply in your first job. This is something that I, as a senior software engineer, still applies every day. Let's continue with more points that will make this first year more enjoyable and less stressful. Don't overpromise. Putting extra effort in and engaging and contributing with ideas in areas you find interesting or you are proficient in is great, even in the areas you are not, and will show a lot about your work ethics. But don't overpromise. Don't overwork for free. The temptation to promise everything to everyone is normal, especially in the first few weeks. We all want to impress, we all want to be seen as someone that is passionate and doesn't mind putting in an extra couple of hours a day. This can feel like the best attitude to have as you show willingness to do your part and more. Nevertheless, this can give people the wrong idea about you. On one hand, you might be promising something you cannot deliver and this can show ego rather than being down to earth. Or on the other hand, people can get used to the idea that you should work 12 hours a day and the moment you don't do that, they'll think you are having a lazy day or that you are not committed anymore. It's okay to say no. It's okay to say I look into it tomorrow. It's as good to learn how to work as is to learn to respect yourself and your personal time. Do this from day one. Otherwise, the day that you decide to do so, people won't take you seriously and you'll feel you are disappointing them. Do networking. Any job is a great networking opportunity. Even if you join a big company and you feel small and invisible, your career can live forward just by meeting and getting on with the right people. Not only is it important to network with new people, but it's also important to take the time to get to know your colleagues well ask questions about their lives and remember what they said and ask about these questions again next time you see them. People really appreciate it when someone pays attention. And let's be honest, we all love to talk about our holiday trip or what we've done the last weekend, so ask them about it and also share things about you with them. How you get on with your colleague is as equally as important as your performance in your job and your career progression. Even if you feel shy, it's important to push yourself because next time it will be easier, trust me. It's quite common for software engineers to be introverted. There is nothing wrong with that. And don't let this hold you back. The reason why it's really important to carry out these pieces of advice is that first impressions matter. Remember, you make only one first impression. The perception of positive qualities that people take about you in a specific area will give rise to the perception of similar qualities in related things. For example, if people see and think you are a really friendly person, outspoken and transparent in social events, they will see that you have a good base of soft skills to become a good team leader in the future. Good work goes unnoticed, so don't stop giving the 100% of yourself, keeping it real and following these six tips. 
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you are struggling to code, check these two videos. Let me know if you have a tip you can share with all of us. And subscribe to my channel for more tips, advice and honest experience as a software engineer. Thank you for watching.